Hi, Martin here and this is a video about the LEGO Fair Play policy and about copyright problems with the LEGO company. I'm the author of several LEGO building instruction books, so I had to deal with many things like may I use the LEGO word for the title of my books, may I use the LEGO logo and what about disclaimers? So I had to deal with a lot of legal questions or copyright questions. And I found some interesting answers to all these questions, which I'd like to share with you now. So if you want to create a LEGO related product, uh, maybe a book, maybe a website or anything else and you're afraid of getting sued by the LEGO company, you just found the right video which explains what you may do and what would be a copyright violation. First question would be, may I use the LEGO wordmark LEGO and how may I use it? Generally, you can't use a copyright protected name without a license from the brand owner. So if you want to publish a book called, let's say, How to Fix a Walkman, uh, then you have to ask Sony, the owner of the Walkman brand, for permission. Else, it's most likely that they're going to threaten you with a lawsuit. But question is, why would they? At first glance, there's nothing evil about writing a book titled How to Fix a Walkman. The answer is, the owners of widely known brands such as Walkman or Lego are always afraid of the trademark becoming a so-called generic trademark. It's important to know that in order to understand Lego's guidelines on how to use their trademark names. So what is a generic trademark? Wikipedia says, a generic trademark is a brand name that has become a generic name of a whole class of products, usually against the intentions of the trademark's holder. And that is what happened to the Walkman brand. Everybody on earth associates a mobile MC player with the word Walkman, no matter if it was manufactured by Sony or not. And when this happens, when a trademark name becomes a common word, which you can find in an ordinary dictionary, then a competitor can claim the removal of the copyright protection of that name. Uh, because you can't register a common word like air, water or soil as a trademark. And that is why Google forbid dictionaries to translate to Google as to search in the internet. For the word Walkman, this actually happened some years ago in Austria. Somebody claimed the removal of the trademark registration. He was successful. And now in Austria, you can label anything Walkman without having to ask Sony for permission. And this happened to quite a lot of trademarks. Here are some of them. they all got genericized. Wikipedia says a trademark thus popularized has its legal protection at risk in some countries such as the United States and United Kingdom as its intellectual property rights in the trademark may be lost and competitors enable to use the genericized trademark to describe their similar products unless the owner of an affected trademark works sufficiently to correct and prevent such broad use. And this last sentence, work sufficiently to correct and prevent such broad use, is the answer to the question why big companies would sue not only their competitors, but also their fans for using their trademark. It's the fear of the companies to lose their trademarks by genericization. George Lucas was asked once why the Lucasfilm company sues its fans all the time. And he replied something like he would be really sorry for this, but he would have to do so else, according to the law, his company could lose the Star Wars trademark. And now we are coming back to Lego. With Lego it's almost exactly the same. Even if you write a book called How Much I Love Lego, you would be in trouble because in their eyes it would be a misuse of their trademark name and a copyright infringement. The generic trademark problem is the biggest issue, but there are three more reasons why LEGO cares so much about their trademark names. Reason number two would be they don't want direct competitors to benefit from their brand. So, for example, Chinese LEGO copyists are not allowed to relate their products to LEGO. Third is that they don't want their brand to be connected to bad things or to low quality products. So they want to make clear that this is a LEGO brick and this isn't. It's a PB brick, by the way. And fourth is that they care about liability. They do not want to be accountable for what third parties do or don't do with LEGO products. But in spite of all these reasons why the LEGO company is skeptical about third parties using their brand, they did something which is quite special. 
they allow the usage of their copyrighted stuff like the Lego word under certain circumstances. And which circumstances these are is stated in their so-called fair play policy. Yeah, and now we are finally coming to the main part of this video. There are three different documents that define the Lego fair play policy. First and biggest one is the fair play brochure, which you can download from lego.com as a PDF. Second one is the website fair play document, which you can find as a text in many different languages also on lego.com. And the third one is a rather hard to find one. It's the book policy. That one is officially not available on the internet. In order to get it, you actually have to inquire the Lego group about it, as they say here in their fair play brochure. I did that, I asked them for the document and they actually sent me a two pages Microsoft Word file which includes everything you gotta know if you want to publish a Lego related book. By the way, if you want to publish a Lego book, please also see my other video, how to write a Lego book. But first things first, let's talk about the Fair Play brochure, a guide compiled by the Lego group. As I said, downloadable on their website as a PDF. On the first page they explain the different forms of legal protection. Trademark, patent, design and copyright. I think design is not a form of legal protection, but uh, it can both be trademark and copyright protected. Here on the right you can see a drawing from the famous Lego pattern from 1958. And what's barely known is that Lego didn't invent the stacking system with blocks and studs. They only invented these little tiny tubes inside the Lego bricks. The stackable plastic brick with studs is some years older than the Lego brick. The inventor of Lego just had the good idea to use it as a basis for a toy. So the Lego patent is only about these tubes inside of the bricks. And that's maybe the reason why the already mentioned PB bricks, which were an East German Lego copy, didn't have these tubes inside. These pages here are about the history of the Lego company, interesting but not for this video. But here it starts, fair or unfair. Here they say that Lego parts have a great quality and therefore other products shouldn't be mistaken as Lego bricks. They also say Lego bricks wouldn't be toxic, but that's not exactly true because burning ABS plastic produces toxic gases that can cause cancer. Next page is policing our rights and that's the essential page. So whenever you use the Lego word or another Lego trademark in a public document, you have to follow these four rules. First, always write our trademarks in capital letters. That's because of the generic trademark problem. Make sure everybody knows that the Lego word and the other Lego trademarks are brand names and not common words. Um, the rules for upper and lower cases don't apply for brand names. Second, always use a noun after the trademark, e.g. Lego toys, Lego values. And that's also because of the generic trademark problem. The Lego company insists that you must not call this just a Lego, but a Lego brick. And that's because if you call this a Lego, then you can call this a Lego too, despite it wasn't manufactured by the Lego group at all. So if this was officially a Lego, it will question the Lego word as a trademark and would indicate that Lego was just a common word for a physical object. Remember that the Lego company neither invented this nor are they the only producer of it. You can buy this AK-47 replica for just $40 at Alibaba and of course it wasn't made by Lego but by some Chinese manufacturer. Third, never add a possessive S plural S or hyphen, e.g. Legos design, more Legos to play with, Lego hyphen bricks. It's the same thing. The possessive S would suggest that Lego is not a trademark but a person or a company. Uh, the Lego company is called the Lego group and not just Lego. Legos would lead to the false assumption that Lego was a physical object. One Lego, two Legos. And that's not good because Lego is not a thing but a trademark. The prohibition of a hyphen after the Lego word is, again, because they don't want the trademark name to be treated like an ordinary word. It can't be a part of another word, it always has to stand alone between two blank characters. And of course, this applies to all Lego trademarks, not just the Lego word. Fourth, never change or adjust the graphical design of a trademark 
e.g. change the colors or shape of the LEGO logo. This one is quite difficult to understand. First of all, without permission, you can't use the LEGO logo at all. Not even if you change its color or its typing. And if you have the permission, you are not allowed to change the logo. You have to use it as it is. This rule is not because of the generic trademark problem, but to fend off copyists and competitors who try to create a false association with the LEGO company, like the producers of this shirt and this mug. Okay, these were the rules from this red box, but there are more postulated in the book and website policy documents. I'll be coming back to that later in this video. Okay, here comes the disclaimer you have to include if you use the LEGO word anywhere. LEGO and the LEGO logo are trademarks of the LEGO group. Here they state again that LEGO is just a brand and the company that produces LEGO bricks is the LEGO group. Okay. Misuse of trademarks. On the right is a list of examples of graphical trademarks which you are not allowed to use without permit by the LEGO group. And as you can see, they also claim the LEGO brick itself to be a trademark. But that's not completely true, because a European court has decided in 2008 that the Lego brick can't be a trademark, because its physical appearance derives from its mechanical function. So in Europe, you can indeed use the Lego brick to advertise your product, just as Panasonic did in Germany. Here are some misuses of the graphical LEGO trademark. Of course, some shirt manufacturer is not allowed to print the LEGO trademark on a shirt without permission. Next page. This is about the misuse of the LEGO brand on websites. It states that you can't use a registered trademark by the LEGO group inside of an URL. For example, LEGO, Mindstorms, Duplo or Legoland, but of course that also applies to all other LEGO trademarks, like Ninjago or so. And that's not only true for domains, but also for subdomains. You may not use the red LEGO logo on websites, unless in combination with the sale of genuine LEGO products. And here they say that they don't permit the complete, but a very limited reproduction of their copyrighted materials on websites. That means that you may show one page of a LEGO building instruction on your website, but not a complete one. And of course, if you publish anything LEGO related on your website, you have to include the disclaimer LEGO is a trademark of the LEGO group, which does not sponsor, authorize or endorse this website. The first part of the disclaimer is due to the generic trademark problem and second one due to the liability. Here they show two websites which are in their eyes copyright infringements. One is LEGO Israel, that's clear because the LEGO word is part of the URL. And the other website illegally shows minifigs, which are, unlike the LEGO brick, still copyright protected as a 3D trademark. Attempted association. Here they state that they don't want their high quality products to be associated with low quality ones by other companies. So they don't want things like these. But as I said, in case of the Panasonic advertisement, LEGO can't do anything about it, because in German language countries, the LEGO brick isn't a registered trademark anymore since 2008. Product copying. Here they say that in some countries the LEGO brick is still protected by the law. Um, okay, but these must be countries outside of Europe. On the right they show some Chinese copies of classic LEGO sets, which are quite funny because they even copied the cover design. Next page is about licensing. Here they show products by companies other than the LEGO group that legally feature LEGO stuff. So in some cases it's possible to achieve a license from the LEGO group. Last page is the conclusion. And here they complain a bit about the different copyright laws in the different countries and claim that it's not only in the interest of the LEGO group, but also in the interest of the little children who only want to have original, virgin, genuine LEGO products to change the copyright laws in the different countries in favor of the LEGO group and in disfavor of the LEGO uh, copyists. All we ask is fair play. Okay, we are done with the fair play brochure. And now we come to the website fair play document, which can be found on the LEGO website in many different languages. Okay, first paragraphs are again a little rant, 
against the copyists the Lego group has to fight against who try to diminish the Lego brand with their low quality products and that the laws should favor the Lego group rather than the copycats. Okay, we already know that, but here is something new. Proper use of the Lego trademark on a website. If the Lego trademark is used at all, it should always be used as an adjective, not as a noun. That's funny because Lego is a noun and you can't use a noun as an adjective like Oh see, that looks very Lego. I think what they mean is use the Lego word in a descriptive way. For example, say models built of Lego bricks, never say models built of Legos. Okay, we already know that, that is rule number two from the brochure. Always use our trademark in connection to another noun. But this is new. The trademark should appear in the same typeface as the surrounding text and should not be isolated or set apart from the surrounding text. In other words, the trademarks should not be emphasized or highlighted. Okay, that means that the Lego word has to be written in the same font and the same font size as the rest. So this would be a no-go. In other words, don't use the Lego word as an eye-catcher, but only in a descriptive way. Next rule. On a website, the Lego trademark should always appear with the R in a circle, the registered trademark symbol. I think that self-explanatory Lego should be recognized as a trademark and not as a common noun because of the generic trademark problem. Don't use the Lego word inside an URL. Okay, we already had that. And that's it for the website policy. And now we come to the book policy document, the one which you can only obtain when you ask the Lego group for it. Yeah, this document is about books, printed materials, building instructions. In the past several years, more and more books have been written with a Lego theme. We have gotten a number of questions about how the Lego trademarks and copyrighted materials can be used in printed publications. Question, is there any time I can use the Lego logo in my book? Answer, no, unless it's agreed by the Lego company, like for this book. Question, I wanna use the Lego logo, the minifig design, or the Lego brick design on my cover. May I do that? Answer, no. But as I already mentioned, the Lego brick itself isn't a trademark anymore in Europe. But here's written, you may use the Lego word mark in your title. Please check the Fair Play Policy brochure for the proper use of the Lego word mark. And by this they mean the four points from the red box inside the Lego Fair Play brochure, which I already mentioned. Question, may I use the Lego word mark in the title of my book? Answer, yes but only in a descriptive way. So you must not name your book just Lego Robots, but you can name it Building Robots, My Guide to Lego Mindstorms, or Robots Built with Lego Bricks, or use the word unofficial. So you could name it Unofficial Lego Robots Guide. And the word unofficial must appear in a very large, bold and highlighted lettering. Question. Do I need to use the registered trademark symbol every time I use the word Lego? Answer. Every time you use the word Lego or another Lego trademark as a trademark, then you have to use the registration symbol. For example, you must not use it in the word Lego group, because here Lego is not a trademark but part of the Lego company's name. However, you don't need to use it each and every time the Lego trademark appears, but on the title, in the heading, first time it appears in a text, on every new page, and always when you are in doubt. Question. Does there need to be a formal arrangement between the Lego group and my publisher? Answer. No. Unless he wants to make it an official Lego book and wants to use the original Lego logo on the cover. Question. Can I publish original Lego building instructions in my book, CD or website? Answer, no, but there can be exceptions like the website Brick Portal. Question, can I post Lego building instructions on my website for informational purposes? Answer, yes, but only very small pieces of them and not for commercial usage. Question, can I stylize the Lego wordmark? Answer, yes, you can write it in whatever style you want but it has to be in the same style and size as the surrounding text. With the exception of the word unofficial, because that has to be bolder and bigger than the rest. But you shouldn't stylize it to something which looks similar to the Lego logo. 
or to something which could be regarded as the new LEGO logo? Question. In the book, can I use pictures of LEGO models, scans of catalogs, building instructions or other LEGO materials? Answer. Only pictures taken by yourself, not the original ones by the LEGO group. Question. What kind of disclaimers should I use in my book? Answer. LEGO, the LEGO logo, the brick and knob configurations and the minifigure are trademarks of the LEGO group, which does not sponsor, authorize or endorse this book. Liability. It should be noted that the LEGO group is not responsible for any damages brought against an individual by a third party for any published content simply because it contains LEGO trademarks and or copyrighted materials. Okay, that's it for the LEGO Fairplay documents. But there's one thing left. In the Fairplay brochure they say, the LEGO trademark has the widest possible protection for all goods and services and that we should be able to prevent others from using the LEGO trademark not just for toys but for any goods. But that's not completely true. I've checked the European trademark register and I found out that the LEGO word is copyrighted in only 30 of 45 possible niches. Here is a list of all 45 niches and the yellow marked ones are the niches that the LEGO word is registered in. So in Europe you can indeed sell LEGO chemicals, LEGO paint, no LEGO soap but LEGO oil, medicine, baby foot, LEGO limbs, eyes and teeth, LEGO yarns and threads, LEGO plants and animals, LEGO beers, LEGO insurances. And you may offer LEGO installation services, LEGO transports, LEGO catering, LEGO medical services and LEGO security services. But um, <clears throat> please don't take my word for it, okay? And that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and that it helped you to understand the legal situation. But one last word. I think the LEGO group is a friendly company and they wouldn't sue you for publishing a book called How Much I Love LEGO but they would demand from you to stop printing it or to change the title and of course threaten you with a lawsuit if you don't. That's not because they're evil but because they have to take action somehow just to satisfy the law. Okay, please give this video a thumbs up and share it wherever you think it could be of help and of course buy my new book Elite Weapons for LEGO Fanatics available in fine bookstores everywhere. And after watching this video, you should now understand why the book has such a long title instead of just Lego weapons.